Hi, I'm Judy Larson from the Westmont Ridley Tree Museum of Art, and this is Art from Home with the Westmont Ridley Tree. I'm so glad you joined us. We're going to do a series of activities around Japanese crafts. Today, we're going to write haiku. That's a poetry form that's very specific to the Japanese culture. We're then going to make a scroll out of that haiku poetry, and eventually, we'll do some suiseki. That's the art of stone meditation. And then we're going to do ikebana, which is flower arranging in Japanese culture. And then we're going to create a tokonoma, where all of these come together, possibly with some origami, which you're also going to learn later on in this series. So all things Japanese, it should be fun. So let's start with haiku. What is haiku? I've got one here to share with you. It's written by a Japanese poet from many centuries ago. Just listen. An old silent pond. A frog jumps into the pond. Splash. Silence again. So these are little poems that form a picture, like a snapshot of an instant. Just something very simple and very direct, but they're so much fun to write. And I like writing them because I think it helps with your writing at school. It helps you learn that every word counts and there's no extra word. There's no word that can be taken out. Every word helps tell a story in these little tiny haiku poems. So there's a formula to this. Let's start with um, that formula. These originated in the 13th century um, they often focus on nature, and the best ones are the simple ones, not the complex ones, a very simple idea. As I said, they just describe an instant. I like to think it's like taking a photo on your phone. You capture one instant, one second of a story. So they don't tell the whole story, rather they leave your reader with a feeling or an emotion. Sometimes two opposite things come together. You get an unexpected comparison. And remember, no, no subject is too simple. Just a passing thought or an observation is best when it comes to haiku. So how do we write one? What is the formula? Um, first of all, find your subject. And some great subjects could be animals, the seasons, the weather. A typical day in your own backyard, your garden, uh, maybe a hike you took with your family, maybe changing climate or things you like in nature that are the color red. Whatever it is, make it simple. Pick any subject you like. And then make a list of words to describe that subject. Now, in haiku, you have to count the syllables. And I'm going to go into what is a syllable. So. If I were to say the word bookmaker, how many syllables does that have? Bookmaker, three syllables. How many syllables in adventure? Adventure, three syllables. Machinery, machinery, four syllables. How many syllables in hill? That one's easy, just one syllable. Apple, two syllables. Electricity, electricity. Five syllables in one word. That's a long one. So you need to learn to count the syllables. Now there's a format. The first line, there are five syllables. In the second line, there are seven syllables. And then in the third line, there are, again, five syllables. No exceptions. It's 17 syllables total, and that's it. That is what haiku is. They do not vary. They don't change. And that's what's fun about writing these little poems. You always write in the present tense, so that means you say, I am, not I was. The sun comes up, not the sun came up. We work together, not we worked together. Always the present tense. So again, I'm going to repeat that haiku that I said at the very beginning. So listen carefully. Listen to the syllables. An old silent pond, five syllables. A frog jumps into the pond seven syllables. Splash, silent again, five syllables. 
They don't have to rhyme. That's the fun thing about them. Uh, and that you can space them any way you want. Blush left, you can have them stepped, you can have them centered. Um, it's up to you, what, whatever you like. When you're writing your haiku, think about the essence of your subject, the very heart, the spirit of it, the true meaning of that subject. Your reader will see something new and in a fresh way by reading your haiku. I like to think of a haiku poem like you're looking through a pinhole and what's, you can't see everything, but you can see everything through that pinhole. That's a haiku. It's just one moment in time. So let's write one together. I chose the subject of my dog, and I thought, he's an Australian shepherd. And when I think about my dog, here's some of the words I think about. He's warm, curls, smart, athletic, frisbee, brown nose, fast runner, licks, Best friend, loyal, brown eyes, sweet, likes belly rubs, floppy ears, soft, smells like dirt. So I took all those ideas and here's what I came up with. Brown nose, amber eyes, waves of caramel, sweet curls, my most loyal friend. And here's a picture of the dog. So let me read a few more. This one's about a harbor seal. Sunbathing beach babe, blubber thick and whiskers frayed, a vision in gray. Sometimes it's fun to write these haiku and make people guess what animal you're talking about. So here's one I wrote so you can guess what it is. Picnic crashing fiend, I cannot see but I hear you, feel the sting and itch. Here, do you know what it is? That's right, it's a mosquito. Here's another one. Noisy midnight choir, a thousand chirps announcing, I'm here, come find me. Do you know what that is? That's right, it's a cricket. So just a few more examples. This one is a frog, a poison dart frog, sitting in the canopy, hunting for his food. It's a short poem, but it describes the frog. So when you write your haiku, you can illustrate them any way you want to. This one, it's about a bee, and it has a little watercolor of um, bumblebees, and there's the poem on the right-hand side. This one I liked, and I used it in mine. It's like you put a little bit of ink in a straw and blow it on the paper, um, and that's what this artist did. And this one as well. In Japan, they say cherry blossoms mean it's spring, but it's not spring here. They can also be funny. I mean, you don't have to be real serious. I, this was one of my favorites. I unscrewed my head, tossed it into the clouds, and it never came down. Here's another one that was funny. Boom, 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 bang, bang. My head is a battleground with countless outbursts. Here's some ideas for um, decorating your haiku. Um, some real clever ones, making a snowflake, using a cupcake holder. Um, if you go on the internet, you can find some great images, photography, where you can um, include your haiku in, on that photograph. Here's some good examples. I thought what would be fun is um, to make some books that would be scroll-like. An accordion book opens up like an accordion, and that is one possibility. But you can see here that my accordion book, it can be folded up like an accordion, or it can hang like a scroll. Um, this one, remember I told you about blowing ink onto the paper? Um, it, they almost read like little plants or maybe even Japanese characters. And it was really pretty easy, just some Japanese ink and a straw. And you just take a little finger full of it and then blow it in any direction you want it to go. Um, and it'll surprise you. It makes some, um, some different kinds of patterns. You could use ink and pen. Um, I found that even a sponge with ink will create some um, pretty amazing uh, patterns. Now, these are hanging scrolls. Um, I also did one that opens up in a more um, traditional way of um, a scroll with the haiku that I wrote about the seasons. And I illustrated them with some ink drawings. 
This one's better if you open it flat on the table. But you might not want to write about four different things. And so if each of your haiku is on a different subject, I made one over here about a rose in springtime. And I put straws to anchor it so it gives it a little weight so it'll hang flat on the wall. And I used red paper so I couldn't really draw on it. So I just cut out a watercolor of a rose and put it on and then just ran some ribbon through the straw. So let's say you wrote five haiku on five different subjects. You could have five of these little scrolls um, to hang on the wall um, and that works just fine. So let's run through some of the book ideas. Um, an accordion book. It's called accordion because it looks like the instrument, the accordion. This is the basic scroll book. But scrolls can look like just about anything. You could have a very thin scroll, like on the upper left. Um, or you could have thicker scrolls, like on the right. Or a very traditional Asian scroll. Um, here, this one mounted on silk. It's um, a little bit more difficult, but it's beautiful. So here's what you're going to need. Some cardstock paper. Get at least 10 pieces because um, you want to do all of your poems um, in, in some format for presenting them. You could use typing paper if you don't have cardstock. Um, if you want to do what I did and print out something from the internet, you'll need a, a color printer. Uh, colored pencils, watercolor, anything will work fine for illustrating it. And if you want to make those little straw blown characters, you'll need either a thick straw or a thin straw to blow that ink around. Um, I just have hinged mine with invisible tape on the back side. That's the easiest way to do it. Uh, I glued chopsticks to the top to give it some weight and just found some cord that I actually took off of a Christmas bag, uh, and that became the way that I hung it on the wall. Um, but you could go out in your backyard and find sticks out in the backyard. They'll look just as creative. Uh, have fun with it. Do any kind of scroll you want. And have fun writing your haiku. That's the most fun. Your little 17-syllable poems about nature. Enjoy.